iron oxidizes in air. We don't usually think of iron in the same category as things that burn. We think of it as rusting maybe, but it will burn under the right circumstances. Now, if you try to light a cast iron skillet on fire with a match, it's not gonna work. That's good because we like to put those into close contact with fire as part of their job, but what circumstances will allow iron to burn? What's so special about steel wool? The key is that it has a lot of surface area per every little bit of iron. That is to say, it has a high surface area to volume ratio. There's lots of surface area and very little mass, so two things can happen. First, the amount of air available to any bit of iron is sufficient for a rapid reaction. Like the skillet, most of the iron is locked deep inside the structure of the pan. Oxygen just can't get to it. Second, related, there's enough heat generated by the reaction to start the next part of the reaction. Steve Mould just made an amazing video about this idea that you can have a reactant that's sort of ready to react and that when you set it off, it can excite the next part of the medium, a sort of propagating reaction. Well, this is similar. The iron is excited by heat. That causes a reaction, which gives off enough heat to excite the next bit of iron. In school, Smokey the Bear taught me that I could prevent forest fires, and fire needs three things, oxygen, fuel, and heat. Sparky the arsonist fox says fire spreads when every bit of fire starts even more fire. When the surface area to volume ratio is too low, the reaction is not self-sustaining. Air can't get to the iron. Unreacted metal carries away the heat. It's not an excitable medium, and Sparky is sad. So I tried to set myself a challenge. Can I make iron burn in 2D? Can I make an excitable medium made of iron that will propagate a reaction? When it burns, it reacts with air, and in this case, we're gonna make almost entirely iron oxide. When most fuels burn, they make carbon dioxide, which floats away, but iron burns to make this solid product. It doesn't float away at all. It's still there and we can weigh it. I start with 49 milligrams on the balance. Then I ignite that with my little butane torch. Once the reaction is complete, I end up with about 55 milligrams of iron oxide product. The mass went up because oxygen actually added to that iron chemically. If I try to do that reaction in a 2D space, it just won't work. There's no oxygen in there, so the reaction just dies. What we need is a solid material that provides oxygen to the reaction. So I bought a very small amount of potassium chlorate. That decomposes to potassium chloride, basically salt, and oxygen when it's heated. The question is, can the iron provide the heat to sustain the reaction? Can we make an excitable medium by mixing steel wool and this oxidizer? No. No, we can't. Unfortunately, this is not the way to go. I read that potassium chlorate can decompose at a lower temperature if you add a manganese catalyst, so I might try that next, or maybe I can force air into that 2D space in a sort of flow, but that might carry away more heat. Or maybe I can make a 2D steel wool sheet held in place by some sort of gas permeable mesh. What do you think? I'm gonna call that attempt number one. Do you have any ideas on how to get a thin layer of iron to burn and propagate in two dimensions? My plan is to initiate the reaction with an electric resistance heater instead of my little butane torch. So tune in for attempt number two and leave me your thoughts if you have any ideas. Thank you for watching. I've been Peter Allen, PhD chemist and host of this Science Curious channel. If you like this, please do the YouTube stuff and help me find more viewers just like you. In my last video, I talked about the alchemy of aluminum or aluminium if you prefer and how scientific knowledge is a kind of wealth. So tune into that, leave me a comment. If you want to talk about some cool science topic, you can leave me an email or a voicemail or a comment below. My contact information is in the description. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.